I did 7.30, got home at 3.30 in the morning, drove straight through, I couldn't make myself stop, it was one of those things, I remember she, when you talking about Sagittarius, yeah. I was stubborn to get to it, like I committed to it and I couldn't stop, I, a couple times I got delirious about I need to pull over, Yeah, that's yeah. when it gets scary, yeah, you, you know, it's not even that you're sleepy, it's you get a little delirious, it's like you think you're driving, but you're right. dreaming that you're driving, yeah, <laughs> well, the worst is when like 50 miles go by and you go, what just happened the last 50 miles? <laughs> what did I see? Um, don't yep. do, don't do that. Um, hi everyone, um, Craig and Jamie Lee. Um, we're talking about June programming. We got a lot of stuff on the docket, um, some exciting stuff uh, to talk about for programming. If you're interested, um, what's up this month? Let me uh, just do a uh, quick recap on May. In May, you uh, added in all the Murph prep. That was mm -hmm. cool. Um, we had a ton of PRs in Murph. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, great turnout too. Yeah. Um, yeah, really good turnout. And thanks, Moxie, too. We didn't get a picture, I forgot to tell. Because Paige, Paige wasn't there. And Paige right. wasn't there. No, she was she went and made a trip down to regionals. Um, and then uh, we had uh, the old Olympic lifting totals, mm -hmm. in which we had a ton of PRs. And then what was cool is we accumulated that ended with uh, the competition, yeah. the Spring Classic, yeah. which is which the other, I think I mean, almost every athlete PR to work about, match their PR. Just about. And some of those newer athletes have that need, you know, learn exactly what a meet's gonna be like. So right. when we so do our next one, we're, so we're gonna fall. Put up, I'm gonna, I wanna put up the Fall Classic actually this week okay. on our site so that people can plan for it yeah. ahead of time. If you haven't seen the pictures and you haven't talked to a lifter yet that's done the, um, the uh, spring classic or the winter classic talk to them find out you know we set it up full kilogram setup platform in the middle of the gym very similar to a real life situation um, and then front squat and yeah. double unders too front squat um, double unders yeah and lots of front squat PRs I, yeah. I actually pulled up sure wad I'm like oh good cool I can pull up a feature and look at all the PRs and, and it's I mean there's deep yeah, there's something like, there's 250 PRs just wow. through the first week of the of the, of the last oh, week of the month. Cool, if I pull yeah. the whole month, it's, it's like 10 pages of PRs. So that's awesome. Um, so again, the programming is two things. One, we try to make CrossFit fun, classes fun, so it's, it's, it's you like coming here. And two, um, Jamie's committed to making everyone better athletes, better at the stuff we do. Um, today's workout, I looked at it, it's so you know, today in the gym we're doing a 1K row, um, a rest, 2K row, 2K row, right, and then a 1K row, and I thought, you know, it's kind of boring, it's a good post-workout, mm -hmm. uh, post-Murph. It's a great post-sore Murph. Right, post-sore <laughs> Murph, but it also is going to help us get better for a workout that we'll talk about in yeah. a couple minutes, that we're, a benchmark workout we're going to do this month. So, um, that was... That was May, June. Um, focus for June. Strength focus for June mm -hmm. is um, so our primary focus this month in June. We're gonna get back into so coming off of all our Olympic lifting, but high skilled um, strength movements in, in a sense. You know, the, the technique has to be there in order to get the barbell overhead and make it heavier. Um, but going into uh, June, we're gonna be working a little more on powerlifting techniques. Okay. Um, so our primary focus is gonna be our deadlift. So we're working on a heavy pull. Um, and that's going to be working with a more of a linear progression. So starting with a higher, a little bit of a higher rep, like a five by five. And we're going to decrease this the rep scheme. The, the sets are going to stay the same, but the rep scheme is coming down as we try to increase the percentages. Okay. Um, for those of those athletes that maybe not know their one rep max or don't have that data, um, this is a great time to kind of establish, you know, what is a strong effort. Um, our goal is to try to maintain um, keeping the bar touch and go, so unbroken sets. And when I say unbroken sets, what I'm looking for is maintaining tension in the posterior chain. So glutes and hamstrings, we shouldn't be feeling this in the back if we're trying to go touch and go. Um, if you do, drop the bar, reset, talk to the coach, and get some feedback to see what you need to do to uh, maintain that good range of motion. If one of those things is just maybe not enough familiar, if you're not familiar enough with the deadlift as far as the touch and go, we're going to modify with a uh, Romanian deadlift. So really trying to isolate and, and grab the hamstring engagement. Okay, so deadlift will be one, I see it once or twice a, a week. About every five uh, actually, days. About every five days. Um, we publish our programming seven days in advance. Um, look to the programming, find out when that day is. If you can't make it in and you want to get stronger in deadlift, you can't make it in, that's an open gym opportunity. Come in and do your deadlifts. Do it after, 
maybe just, not after class. I wouldn't class. do it. I wouldn't do it after class. I mean, maybe before the, class. The, the deadlift thing is the deceiving on the deadlift is it, it will adapt to your nervous system. You know, yeah. you don't you don't necessarily feel like, man, my legs are sore. Right. It's like no, your whole central nervous system is going to be zapped. So it's you know it's important to a get a really good warm up. So if you are doing this in open gym by yourself, make sure you get a really good warm up and you know try to have somebody around that might like, hey check it out. How's it look? If it looks good, keep rolling with it. If it doesn't look so good, maybe dial it back and work on uh, the remaining deadlift. Okay. So if you can get uh, your, um, it looks like uh, five deadlift sessions in this month, you're, uh, you'll probably end up uh, PRing as we've seen with the previous months. The secondary strength is bench press. Bench I noticed, press. which that's, that's yeah. kind of cool. Especially was which, not planned after regionals. I was that was planned before regionals. Right. So, so the limbo <laughs> workout for regionals is um, deadlift, bench press, squat clean. Um, I'm excited because both of these things I haven't worked on very much, mm -hmm. and so for me, it, this is going to be a good month of programming for me to get better at both of those things. One thing on the why, bench, why bench press? Well, part of the reason I mean, think of like what we've been working on. We started off the year with some handstand push-ups. Then we went into um, you know working on rings and to the ring muscle up. So a lot of times we miss out on that strength of uh, the pressing strength, right? So if you if you're able to turn yourself over onto the, the top of the uh, the dip, not able to press out, you know that's that's a shorter weakness. Um, we came off of a ton of push-ups in our Murph prep. So right now what we're doing is we're working on that horizontal plane, uh, uh, that working that frontal plane in the press. Um, the idea is to overload the system with load, not volume. So we are starting off with a lot of volume, but we're trying to find intensity through that period of time. Yeah. So as we decrease through, the, or as we work through the month, you'll notice the reps do go lower. So we're looking for more of that higher load, but lower repetition on that press. So, well, so when Jamie says that, in looking for intensity in the higher repetitions, that means your last couple sets, the last reps of the last couple shit sets should be, those should be hard. Yeah. Right? They should be challenging. They should be challenging. But the one thing I want to mention on the bench, on the bench press is um, it's not just pick the bar off the rack and then do your presses. Right. We want to think about creating tension and torque in our shoulders. Now, when we use our shoulders as a system, we're trying to generate external rotation through that press. Right. So going through the movements, make sure you listen to the coach, take the, uh, the, the um, face face the camera and show it because you showed so, that you showed that in our coaches. Yeah. Team. So as far as like when we think about when you, we've used this a lot, you know, when you're squatting, spread the ground with your feet, um, break the bar apart, overhead squats, break the bar apart. What we're doing is we're taking ourselves into an externally rotated shoulder position. Having ha our hands on a bar creates a closed torque environment, so we are in a more stable position. Where if we're on rings, it's an open torque, so there's more movement that we can work through. Now it takes a lot to uh, develop that strength in the shoulders, and that's why we're working on our bench press, is working on the true strength aspect of the shoulder joint. So uh, one of the things we talked to our coaches about was no clips on the bars for bench press. Yeah. You never know if we get into a situation. Especially if you're by yourself. And the reason is, is that you just, it, it's so much easier to get out of a stuck position if there's no clips on the bar. You just tilt the bar one way and then tilt it the other way and the bar has been emptied. Um, we'd much rather see that than um, then if someone it's getting stuck getting or trying to roll it down the bench across their chest, yeah, across their yeah. stomach. Um, the other thing spotting. is, is we talk to uh, our coaches about spotting and listen to the coaches and they'll give you instruction when spotting is appropriate and, and how to do it. Um, one of the things that I took thing away, I too. yeah, the one thing that Jamie got stumped on immediately and he wanted to remind everyone is you should never be, you should never be collapsing um, or giving up when the spotter yeah. um, takes over. When the spotter helps, you should be pushing through the barbell um, because nobody wants to stand over you and do a compromised position. In a compromised position, position and do a deadlift. Or a bicep curl. Or a bicep just curl. Just to get the bar off. So no matter what, work with, with, work with your spotter and just communicate. Like, no, I don't got it. Continue to press through. Yeah, don't right? stop Help pressing them through get it to the rack. So uh, your coaches will talk to you about about um, the the best ways to spot and whether or not you need a spot. Um, so that's cool. I like the bench press. That's a cool. Yeah, that's a cool combination. Nice classic this month. Yeah, classic strong. Man. And then our third focus, um, our gymnastic focus, rope climbs. So, so a lot of times when we do rope climbs in class um, for a workout, you know, it's it's a it's a tough skill to practice before you go into a workout. So what we're going to be doing with this cycle, um, very similar to what we did with the, the ring muscle ups. We're going to spend a few minutes, well, 
beginning of class, working on just the technique of the different foot locks. So we'll work from hanging from a bar, grabbing a rope, maybe sitting on a box, holding onto the rope, and just working on the foot lock um, until you're on the rope. Now, if you're one of those that are you know, really unsure about climbing ropes and you're not sure about going all the, to all the way to the top, that's fine. You know, This is a good time to work on just getting comfortable hanging onto the rope, climbing up maybe halfway, and then lowering yourself back down in control. It's really important to know that you have control coming down. Yeah. So if you do get up there and maybe you're on the wall, wall of wanting to go all the way up, you get up there. If you don't know how to get down, that can be a scary situation. Oh, and we want to keep our hands in contact and don't slide down the rope right. with all your fingers. Yeah, learning to get that foot position is so huge. Yeah. I, you know, I through the when the age group qualifier came up and the yeah. rope climbs was in and I got myself to a hypoxic state mm -hmm. and I was scared to get on the rope and, yeah. I, and it, it kind of gave me an appreciation for some of our members that are genuinely afraid of mm -hmm. heights for you know uh, rationally afraid of heights without the stimulus and the yeah. stress of the high right. heart rate the yeah. stress and the one thing that gave me confidence I knew if I got my feet on the rope and I got that foothold I was fine like, yeah. I, I just knew if I got the foothold I was fine and if we can get our members there, you know, I would mm -hmm. say anybody can climb a rope if we can get the foothold. Yeah. So, and the other thing too is throughout the skill, so we're gonna spend time in the beginning class working on the skill, a um, little breakout session. And then after the breakout, we're gonna do an EMOM. So very similar to what we did with like the muscle ups. Um, and the idea of these EMOMs are to work on reinforcing good habits. Yeah. Not pulling with the arms, let your legs and hips get your body up, um, you know, things like that. Uh, maybe practicing if you have rope climbs. Practicing rope climbs under stress, but in a little bit more of a controlled environment. So we've got uh, some benchmark workouts this month. Um, I noticed Nancy's on there. Nancy is one of my favorites. Thank you for programming it. Um, 2013 CrossFit Games, first place in that workout. Is that the case? Yeah, Nancy. <laughs> so it's five rounds for time, 400 meter run with 95 pound yeah. overhead squats, yeah. um, 15 reps. Yeah. Um, that's a cool one. And then we also have Mary. Mm -hmm. um, Mary is? Mary is like Cindy's sister. Oh, okay. It's a 20 minute amount right. of yep. uh, 15 pull-ups, 10 uh, pistol squats, and then five handstand push-ups. Okay. So again, okay. I noticed we've had some good substitutions for yeah. the pistols in the gym. Mm -hmm. And it, I'll, I, I use the, I'm using the scaling from time to time yep. as well. This might be a lead-in to a uh, or a hint into our next cycle oh. focus. Okay, so that's that's our last workout of the month of May. Um, then we have three heroes this month. Well, one of my favorites um, is the Chief. Yep. Just uh, that's a that's a Diablo favorite. Yeah. Um, and that's a classic. But, so let me ask you now: are, How are we going to score the Chief? So the um, Chief, we're going to score it the way we have been. Okay. Total rounds. Total, total rounds. Total reps and rounds. And do you are we restarting or do you continue where, where you left off? off. Okay. Pick up where you left off. All right. So um, in this, this is you know how HQ is prescribed it. It's yes. Total work completed. Yes. Um, and you're just gonna pick up where you left off. So it's three power cleans, uh, one thirty five ninety five. Um, we will have a master. There is a master's scale weight on that. So fifty yeah. plus masters. Um, and then we're gonna go into uh, six push-ups and nine air squats. The big thing on the push-ups is, let's try to reinforce the things that we've been working on is good yes. quality push-ups. No worms, stay, try to think about keeping legs straight, hips straight, and your hips and shoulders should come up together. And if you need to modify and scale it, go to a, maybe put a barbell in a rack, go to an incline or use a box, um, or even maybe play around with the band around the waist. The reason why I'm not saying the band around the waist right away is because there's going to be quick transitions going on and you're going to yeah. get in and out of that. Thing. This is, this is, I, I notice with the um, women in the gym, that's not an issue. Like, I, I notice women, women usually, one, will scale sooner and they also really focus on the just taking range the time to motion. push up to the range of motion. The bros, on the other hand, we get a little sloppy. Bro, real bro push up. Yeah, no bro push-ups. Let's try and let's let's, let's remember Saw a few this is uh, yesterday during yeah. Murph. And In the tendencies, I get it too. You want to move fast. Well, the chief is um, you do as many rounds in three minutes of that combination: three, uh, three clean, six push-ups, nine mm -hmm. air squats, and then you do that five times with a minute rest in between. Yeah, with a minute rest. So it's each one yeah. is fast. Now, one thing I want to kind of throw in like the bro push-ups is yeah. yeah, you maybe get more reps but you're also compromising your position. We're not 
using your full range of motion. Yeah. So one thing, think of like what we're trying to accomplish with the bench press is building strength. If we shorten our range of motion, we're gonna be really strong here. If you ever have to go through that full range of motion, you want the flexibility and the ability to recruit the muscles at that yeah. range. So something to avoid for you know any pec injuries is make sure that you are working that full range of motion and not just working half. Yes. It's a good point. So it's, it's really a good safety thing, safety piece. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we have DG, DG. which is That's uh, a new ten, ten minute yeah, for us. Yeah, and it's ten minutes of uh, eight toes to bar, eight thrusters, um, and uh, dumbbell thrusters. And then You'll notice the weights are light. Yeah, and then 12 farmer carry walking lunges again. Those are, those are like, oh man, that's going to be a fast. Yeah, you're going to put them You're going to be cycling through some rounds there. Cool. And then I noticed, uh, and then the last one is uh, Sisson, and that's mm -hmm. towards the end of the month. And that's going to be building off of our rope climb workout, or oh, yeah. all our work, rope that's climb right. work. Sisson's got rope climb, uh, burpees, and a 200 meter run. And if you want to wear a 20 pound vest, you can, though I don't necessarily advise it, especially with the rope climbs, unless you are only if you're really proficient on the rope climbs. Yeah. And even when you are really proficient on the rope climbs, when you come back in from that run, don't feel like you have to jump on it right away. Maybe yeah. jog up, regain your composure before you go for that attempt. So what's cool is we've got, you know, with each of these things, for example, you know, I noticed you got Mary, and then earlier in the week you had pistol practice, which is cool. And so we're, we, you know, everything is kind of designed to get people ready for these benchmark workouts. At the same time, make them better what they, what they're doing. The other thing you're going to notice, um, we're continuing um, with our monostructural focus on. Uh, there's some, there's a quite a bit of rowing. Um, We've been doing a lot of rowing through June or yeah. through uh, through May. Um, so we're going to test the 2K again. Yep. And then we've got another special test later. And then there's the another the special test that could be longer than 2K. Um, Don't be afraid. At the end of the month. And again, but this is the kind of thing where, you know, it, it's, this kind of deep practice is not necessarily fun. Um, and, and, and people might miss those days because oh, it doesn't look like it's going to be fun. Some people may not think it's fun, but some people would love these longer monostructural yeah. things. And you know, CrossFit's all about expanding your, your comfort zone, right? So if you tend to really focus and just come to like the lifting days and the short metcon days, the skill days, like you need to venture off into some of those longer time domains in order to actually improve your fitness. Yeah. and, and, and Skills. Yeah. If you want Especially to, skills. if you want to enjoy rowing more, get better at it. Because when you're better at it, suddenly you want to do it more often. Truth. And it's with, that goes with any movement, yeah. obviously. Um, Once you get that to click, it's yeah. it's, it's actually a little more enjoyable. Um, well, cool. This, this looks like an awesome month. I'm excited about it. Um, the one thing I did want to talk to you about, uh, or no, I wanted to mention to everybody is uh, Sugar Wad is. Uh, we have uh, some cool new features on Sugar Wad. Look for that. Uh, look for those emoji scoring. So we have fit workouts now on Sugar Wad. Um, from time to time, we'll do either just a check mark. So if mm -hmm. it's accessory work, depending on what the workout is, yeah, it'll be yeah. a check mark. Sometimes we'll put the emojis up just for fun. Yeah. And then um, even in today's rowing workout, what was cool is we have the ability now you can put all three scores, and then Sugar Wad will automatically total yeah. those scores. Yeah. And we can choose whether we want we want the leaderboard to recognize the best score, mm -hmm. the worst score, um, it's kind of cool, yeah. or the combination the of the scores, or even the average yeah. scores of all of the three. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So we've got some new scoring stuff that's showing up on SugarWatt. <coughs> if you don't have it, download it on your phone. It's fun. Especially stuff. if you want to see what the workouts the are coming out. The commentary in between our members is just yeah. freaking hilarious. And the notes. Uh, yeah. Keep the notes going, guys. Like, If you're not tracking your notes, um, say when we go to repeat a workout, if you don't give yourself, your future self notes of maybe how you pace this time, you'll never remember when it comes around again. You know, it's, it's always nice to give yourself some future notes like how I attack the workout today versus six or eight months from now. Oh yeah. So that way you yourself can give yourself a, bit, a, a little more uh, strategy, help you with your strategy in the future. Um, the, and then the other thing is we have master, our master's weights are now master's 50 plus, not 55 plus. Um, we're not necessarily following what the games do. The games is the game, or the, the CrossFit Open is CrossFit Open. Um, we're more interested in giving our 50 plus athletes, because we have a lot of 50 plus athletes, um, an opportunity to, to the mark their workout as RX 
and still stay uh, competitive. And this is based upon kind of Jamie's and my observations of you know, our master's community and what weights work. The cool thing about the Masters 50 weight is, is if you're in class and you're not 50 years old but you want to scale it, look to, good you, can look to, you can look to the Masters 50 yeah. modifications and use that as kind of your benchmark there. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean you have to do it that way, um, but, but that's gives you a little guideline. Or yeah, it gives you a little, gives you a little guideline. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. It looks like a great month. Cool. I'm excited about it. Me too. Um, that's it, guys. Uh, that's our focus for June, and we'll uh, catch up with you again soon. Thanks, Jamie.